Bum -ba dum Banjo Ben here in my old truck driving through Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm on my way today to pick up my new baby. That's right, we're going to Huber Banjos. I've ordered a brand new Huber Banjo a few months ago. It's finally ready and I can't wait to see and hear it and I can't wait for you to see and hear it as well. Also, we're gonna take some time to kind of do a little tour behind the scenes of Huber Banjo, meet some of the guys behind making uh, the most sought after banjo in all of bluegrass music. I can't wait. Steve, Man, how are you? How are you? Good, Good to see you. Man, I'm glad to be here today. This is it. This is it. I've been waiting for it. And I'm, I'm excited for you to tell the folks out there a little bit about the banjo, a little okay. bit about Huber banjos in general. Okay. I'm going to give them a little behind the scenes tour here at right. Huber. Um, this is a, a special treat for folks out there because everybody knows about Huber banjos, but not everybody lives close to Nashville or right. Hendersonville, not able to come up and, right. and check it out. So I'm excited for folks to see it. Um, let's talk about this banjo. Okay. This is a this is a custom banjo. Right. Um, I gave you some some different specs. You ordered uh, basically a nickel plated Lexington. So most Lexington models are gold plated. So you want okay. nickel plated. We have the Lexington mm -hmm. engraving. But let's start up here. Uh, this is the this is the Lexington inlay pattern. This is a pattern that uh, I came up with that we use on the Lancaster model and the Lexington. The Lancaster just has a little different. Uh, inlay pattern up here. Okay, so um, Huber's the only one that offers this particular inlay yeah, pattern. Yeah, that's now. right, this particular one. Do you have this, any this other uh, inlay patterns that are uh, specifically yours? Just one more. That's on the Berkshire. We call it our Berkshire model. We call that the Hearts and Petals. Hearts and Petals. And of course, all the other standard inlays from the pre-war days. Oh, the cool. Style threes and Flying Eagle and Hearts and Flowers. All right. And what what about popular. the Sheeler inlay? Uh, Sheeler is a is an inlay f actually from 1941, wow. which is a kind of a a pre-war Gibson inlay that they used around 41. It's basically a abbreviated three pattern. Cool. So tell me about the neck here. This fingerboard, I know I ordered a radius fingerboard. Right. That's what I kind of learned to play on. I'm right. excited. Tell me what you offer there. So this is a 14-inch uh, radius is what we offer, just a slight radius. And this particular uh, fingerboard is Madagascar rosewood. Cool. And it's it's, it really looks a lot like Brazilian. got the little stripes in it. Yeah. Um, of course, if you have a radius neck, then you have a radius bridge, just a okay. slight radius on your bridge to keep your strings the same height right, gotcha. right across the neck. Okay, and that's a custom Huber bridge. And that's there. a custom, right? We, yeah, we make these. Actually, a guy named Brian Sims, very good friend. Okay. Makes, makes my bridges, makes my rims. Awesome. And uh, I know I got the speed neck option. Yeah, on there the you back. go. That's a curly maple neck. Wow. Curly maple resonator with the speed neck on it. Uh, you'll be playing so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Keep some water handy. Uh, we use uh, we use V2 tuners on okay. our on our banjos or whatever tuner yeah. you would want. I mean that's that's easy. Okay. As a custom option. And t tell me about the wood here on the resonator. So this is this is a uh, sunburst piece of curly maple. Man, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And resonators are made by my dad. In uh, Pennsylvania too. Really? Yeah. So wow. we got that set up. We got the tooling set up, and then he retired, so I moved it up there. And uh, cool. he does. He does a great job. So now, the finishing job is just outstanding on that. So this is uh, this is Casey's work. He, okay. Uh, he's he's really good at. It. He's just an expert finisher. Wow. That's the best I've ever seen. All right. This is Casey, who does all the finish work here at Huber Banjos. Casey, what, what what do you spray the banjos with? What kind of finish is that? Uh, this finish is a nacho cellulose finish. Okay, cool. And uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, scuff it in between every coat, and we okay. will put on about oh, between four to six coats, depending on what type of wood it is, whether it be a Man, walnut or a mahogany or a maple. Uh, uh, walnuts usually take a little bit more, but not too much more. They awesome. all come out about the same. Now you're famously known for your tone rings, um, and and I know this one has a, a true tone package. Tell me right. a little bit about that. All right, the true tone is uh, is an HR30 tone ring and a true tone uh, rim. So about three years ago, we dedicated about a year of research into just trying to get as close as we could to the old pre-war banjos and just 
uh, we, we met a guy named Doc, Dr. Ray, Jim Ray, who's okay. an incredible scientist. So he helped us out, and we just got closer than we than we were before. Wow! And it's uh, just just a little bit, but it's it's really it really works. It and really that true tone option is something extra that you can order. Yeah, and or that's, is that, that all you offer now? Uh, no, we offer the other stuff, but we mm -hmm. haven't sold any of the. We just sold true tones. Really? That's all we're selling. Yeah, so that's, that seems to be that seems to be it. The tone rings uh, uh, come in as a casting, and we make them. Wow! Uh, we do all the turning. I do all the turning of the rims. The rims are made, like I said, by uh, Brian Sims. And, uh, Tell me a little bit about the rim, just the wood and the ply. Yeah, it's a three-ply three ply maple rim. Okay. And the process that we go through to get a true tone rim, we use about 15% of all the wood that we that Brian gets in. It gets, goes through testing and, wow. and all these all these proprietary right. <laughs> things that we do to come up with that that uh, piece of the, the ply to wow. use. And that was thanks to Dr. Jim Ray for for. Um, experimenting with the old ones, testing the old ones. What are their qualities? So let's make the same thing. Now, so not just we any maple will do. No, and yeah. and we can't. Obviously, we can't put 75 years right. into a rim like the old the right. old pre wars. But we are as close as you can get. I'm, yeah. I'm certain of that. I can't wait to hear these benches. I mean, they sound they sound incredible now, but I can't imagine 75 years from now. That's that's going to be. A... Hope I'm around. Yeah, hope you are too. <laughs> All right, so upstairs you've got a guy who does the initial assembly on these things. Right. Who's that? Right, Benny Bowling. Benny. Yep. Okay. Great He's banjo player. Here. He's yeah, been working here for years. Player. He plays with a band called the Farmhands. Okay. There's a little plug for him. Yeah. <laughs> This is Benny Bowling. He works. How long have you been here, Huber? Oh wow, seven, eight years. Seven, eight years. All right. And you're you're the assembly guy. I know you you wear a lot of hats here, but uh, tell us a little bit about what happens at this table. Well, basically, when when the banjo neck, resonator, uh, rim come out, I'll assemble, do a pot, do a pot assembly here, and I actually fit the neck to the assembly to the pot. And it's a, it's a little bit of a process uh, getting that on there, but they're all each specially fit together. Right. Until we get it right. Now when Benny's finished up, it comes down here for the final step, right. I guess. No banjo sees the real world until they've come through here. Right, right here. Yep. Awesome. What do you what do you do down here? Alright, so when it comes down from Benny, um, he has pretty much everything done and it basically looks like this okay so what I want to do is I want to make sure that the nut slot is the exactly the right height now Benny Benny does that but I always check it make sure that we just have a tiny tiny bit of bounce okay that's that's how you tell your your nut slot is right so we check that the truss rods really important once Benny puts the banjo together it's under tension uh, the neck can pull up a little bit it's going to move a little bit so they sit here for maybe eh, four or five days, see what's going to happen. So I adjust the truss rod and I bring get the head up to where it needs to be, adjust the tailpiece where it needs to be. That's as far as the pressure on the bridge. Okay. All right, coordinator rods, I adjust those. So it's the sound basically is there, but what I'm doing is the playability. Gotcha. Okay, I want you want to be able to play this, it's just easy to play. It's the, there's not too much bow in the neck. If you have too much bow in the neck and you capo, you'll be out of tune. Oh. If you have too little bow in the neck, you capo and you play and it's just buzzing. So there's just that right spot where yeah. it has to be. So it's playability, get the head right. Uh, the bridge, I will try a couple bridges if I need to. I'll just play it and see and if this isn't, yeah, I'll just grab a bridge. And, wow. and so it's got, you know, and then, and then I sit here and play it. I put the capo on. Make sure it's not buzzing. I also put the spikes in, the fifth string spikes. Okay. All right. I put them in according to what the uh, customer, customer wants. Yeah. Right. Great. Now I see this question a lot, and I'm not a luth here, but I don't want you to reveal too many trade secrets here. But how do you go about finding the correct tension for your heads? All right. I, I like to start with the head at at, at G sharp. Okay? okay. So you've got to be able to hear the note. So. Oh. Wow. There's a G sharp. Sure enough. Okay. Yeah. So I just hear it and I bring it up to G sharp. Okay. All right. Now I now I'm going to play it. Now that doesn't mean it's going to stay at G sharp. It's going okay. it, to it's it's probably not going to go under, but it may go over. So I'll adjust it a little bit, 
and then where the head, I, I decide where the head is, then we include with the banjo the torque wrench. Okay. Okay, so what I do is I take the, the torque wrench and I'll go on the back and I'll see what this particular banjo is to keep this head where it is, okay? And include what number we're at. And that's included in the case. Oh, wow. And when you get the banjo, you go up to the number that I put on the warranty sheet and that's where the head should be. Now that's wow. going to change over time. Yeah. The head's going to loosen up sure. and eventually you have to go to a little higher number right. as the head stretches over. Okay. But that, at least when you get the banjo, you can, if the head's sunk in shipping a little bit, yeah. you can put it right up to the number and that's right where I had it. Do you it. know of any other banjo manufacturers that, that do that? I've never heard of uh, I don't, I haven't heard of it either, but yeah. I mean, you got, you know, the, the head tension is it's so some, important. Yeah. It can just change a banjo just so much. Wow. Hi, I'm Joe Spann. I'm the shop manager here at Huber Banjos. One of the most important things that sets us apart as an operation is that we're a boutique builder. That means that there's very few of us here and that we're glad to answer questions anytime about a banjo that's in process. Sometimes people call me once a week and want to know about how their banjo's coming along. That's not a problem. We're glad to let them know. Man, I'm going to enjoy it for a lifetime. Thank right, you man. so much. You are welcome. What My a pleasure. treat.